Hello, this is Michael Hexter. Welcome to Politics 2100, my channel here on YouTube. So, um, this episode I'm calling both the Democratic Party and the U.S. political system is in a deep legitimation crisis. So this is, um, episode is a revival of, or a, yes, I guess a revival of an idea that uh, Jürgen Habermas um, in 1973 introduced to the world, um, which is about the active activity of legitimating a political or social regime. So uh, it is a, maybe an outgrowth of social contract theory. Um, and uh, the idea is that um, there are certain expectations that p the people have or or let's say constituencies have in a political system and they are um their expectations may be um frustrated by a particular situation in the economy in the society in the politics and they might uh be withdrawing from the existing social contract and um and there would, there's a crisis of the political system or the social system overall. And uh, Habermas, um, who's associated with the Frankfurt School, he's the youngest of the major Frankfurt School uh, theorists. Uh, Theodor Adorno, Max Horkheimer are other well-known um, Frankfurt School theorists um, and uh, who you know, we're interested in understanding late capitalism, really, and, and also trying to understand the rise of the Nazis to power in uh, Germany uh, in the 1930s. So, um, so anyway, the legitimation crisis is something that uh, idea is something that you can apply. It's a very flexible framework, and um, it also calls attention to the activity of legitimating and making, uh, developing or, or manufacturing a consensus, uh, which is something that, you know, um, Noam Chomsky and Edward Herman uh, in discussing the media um, uh, uh, talked about the media's function in doing this legitimating of um, uh, a regime, a particular um, regime. So anyway, so I am, Using, I'm just introducing this in this particular episode because it seems to me that, um, especially with the failure of the Build Back Better agenda, uh, the Democratic Party. Now, I, I'm not being extra hard on the Democratic Party uh, in calling them out in the title, saying that both the Democratic Party and the U.S. political system is in a deep legitimation crisis. So, I. The Democratic Party is the institutional uh, vehicle by which uh, we may still maintain a democracy, at least currently in the United States. They may fade away, they may, uh, it, the party might collapse in some form or other, um, uh, uh, and in which case they won't be that anymore. But currently, because the alternative, um, the uh, Republican Party, who is also uh, unfortunately, with our political system, we have a duopoly, our, and that has to do with the structure of U.S. electoral law, and uh, it should be changed. We should have a multi-party system rather than a two-party system, and uh, we should be doing proportional representation. Uh, there's a system called fair vote that uh, we should be following uh, that allows for um, uh, pluralities and not just majorities to um, have a voice in uh, legislatures. So uh, you have large districts where you can have a, both a winner and then, a, you know, uh, basically you get relationship, uh, you get some uh, various larger minorities or, or groups that are plural, not necessarily plurality, but they are a, a small, a large minority that, for instance, loses a, a uh, first past the post election, they are able to have a voice in uh, government. So, anyway, the um, so I am I am sort of saying that the Democratic Party is 
the closest thing to an adult party in the United States, while the Republican Party is off on a delusional and childlike um, uh, fantasy world, uh, or, or it's it's a it's a dark fantasy world of um, uh, uh, you know uh, where, which is based on lies, which is based on purely on propaganda, and uh, where they are attempting to massage a uh, an electorate purely on a, a, a very thin, basically invented, continually invented, invented um, new uh, scandals or controversies or uh, that are um, mostly uh, not based on in reality uh, to try to keep their base in a in a angry and anxious lather and so they are off away from the actual I mean if they take power they will uh, be restructuring the United States uh, system to be a neo-fascist system so we'll have a new regime that will be non-democratic and uh, and basically if they are able to succeed with their plans so for the current system then the or at least for some version of the current system that includes democracy in it um the democratic party you know it just happens to be they're called democratic with this i'm talking about small d democracy in the first part but this is the democratic party uh confusingly named in this case is the um uh is the party that would um be able to uh um uh, you know, keep together in some form at least a democracy, some some a one person one vote system, and so and they have a legitimation crisis as well. So there's a big legitimation crisis, and there's the the, the little the smaller one that unfortunately it has many relationships to the big the legitimation crisis. So let's talk about the big legitimation crisis. So uh, Donald Trump and not and not just Donald Trump. But before that, the Republican Party has been a, uh, become a party of no, a party of uh, obstruction, a party of racism and neo Confederate ideas, and uh, and now increasingly neo fascist uh, ideas. Uh, you know, model I think on Viktor Orban, or you know, uh, with some uh, you know inspiration. You know, from uh, further back in time, other fascist thinkers, and so anyway, uh, a a racial hierarchy installing a racial hierarchy in uh, U.S. democracy, a minoritarian rule, and that unfortunately, the U.S. system allows for this. There are paths through it that allow the uh, with some amendments, with some change, or with some uh, alterations in. It allows a, uh, a minority rule, as in some sense, part of the Constitution uh, uh, supports. Not the all of it, but some of it. And so, um, uh, and the the impetus or the but the impulse of it does it doesn't honor the impulse of the Constitution, uh, the direction of the Constitution. It simply is going backwards in time and trying to jury rig the hierarchical society uh, that either existed or never existed or existed more uh, likely in the 18th century uh, where we had slave holders, uh, uh, you know, and slavery in the United States. And also, um, so basically a racial hierarchy, uh, in, you know, inscribed in the laws of uh, at least some states, and also within the the vote count, the the census counting, uh, as we know, the the uh, the, the 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 three fifths uh, controversy. Um, I think it's three fifths. Anyway, so the the um, but counting slaves without actually allowing them to vote, among other things. So um, in the censuses. So the um, the legitimation crisis is um, uh, is of that system is because you know we have uh, 
basically chaos agents from the um, Republican Party, like Donald Trump and his minions, uh, battering this old system and creating and running through either uh, transgressing and literally, um, uh, you know, uh, violating the emoluments clause of the uh, the Constitution and, um, you know, just the, but not being prosecuted for it. So and that's an issue of law enforcement, unfortunately, in the United States is being um, uh, we don't are, have uh, consistent rule of law, especially as applied to elite criminals uh, or white collar criminals. So um, so anyway, the uh, the legitimation crisis in a way is, is in a way intentional on the large scale. In other words, that literally we have people planning a uh, uh, like Steve Bannon planning for uh, to undermine the current system and create a new system uh, that is uh, more reactionary and racist uh, and minoritarian and is not based on one person, one vote, not a democracy anymore. Um, and uh, an authoritarian system, okay? And so that's one, uh, uh, so in a way, um, uh, it's an unsubtle legitimation crisis because it was planned, it's absolutely, you know, that's the intention. They literally tell you, we want to undermine the existing system and create a, uh, a new one. Um, and um, so the other one is the Democratic Party, unfortunately, has delivered lots of fodder for um, those chaos agents, those, um, uh, uh, you know, political actors that are trying to undermine the U.S. system um, by being extremely corrupt, I mean, not necessarily more corrupt, in fact, a little bit less corrupt than the Republicans, okay, but still uh, uh, not having much of a leg to stand on in criticizing the Republicans because they themselves are uh, are also in cahoots with the Republicans. So, so there, it's quite a, anyway, the Democratic Party is quite confused about its direction, about its intention. So, and, uh, or at least as regards the social contract, the big social contract, um, that the Democrat, what the Democrats do is that they, they invite uh, hopes um, of the people, for instance, in Build Back Better, they invited hopes of something better and then frustrate them, okay? And so this is immediately endangering the social contract, the part of the social contract that the Democrats are trying to reinforce uh, the idea that government can help people and that people come then to the Democrats saying, help us, and the Democrats then oh, say, oh, I'm sorry, the parliamentarian told us, we, you know, I can't help you. Or, you know, in the case of student loan debt, um, you know, uh, Biden sort of flirting with the idea that he could cancel student loan debt, then when he actually has the power to do so, he doesn't do anything with it. And this is not just Biden. Many of the Democrats act this way. And some of this is a, um, as I've tried to show, is a built-in problem with the existing uh, Democratic Party uh, because they are, you know, they they have a two-front a two um, strategy or two-front uh, to what is the the private front uh, to the donors, the mega donors, and the other one is the facing outward facing front or you know political face to the the voters that say the voters they who they excite with some ideas of something better and then frustrating it and when they respond when they are actually responding to the um, the input of the donors and the and the the wishes of the donors and so you know i've called this their the, their good cop role in this existing and if that's not part of the social contract the good part that's the hidden contract so to speak the con the the um uh you know the clandestine contract they have with um the donor class with the the, the major donors is where that they they they're they're supposed to stand there and, and lose essentially these fights with uh, Republicans um, and uh, or just not be particularly uh, energetic in pursuing their extent, their particular goals. So immediately their legitimacy uh, as a party is, is uh, undermined and they create um, 
the opening for the right wing to hammer them on their uh, their uh, impotence and, and their um, hypocrisy, maybe uh, their uh, and and it, it invites cynicism, and because it's it's pretty much the sort of the the uh, um, the poster child for cynicism in the way that saying a cynic is someone who, who thinks that you know nothing will ever come out. Uh, and so the Democrats say, well, you know, we promised you the, you know, the, 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 the or the, the, the uh, road to hell is paved with good intentions. So Democrats say, well, you know, let us, let us actually play the road to hell here. Um, or, uh, uh, you know, so um, in, in terms of, and, and of course, the Republicans are hell itself <laughs> in, the, in the sense that they are, they are, they literally are, uh, uh, decide are, are wanting to create a hell on, in 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 the United States and intentionally. So and and obviously that's slightly that's somewhat worse. Okay, than at least playing with the idea of having having some um, uh, you know um, unless you're quote unquote an accelerationist. Okay, and I I think that position is pretty uh, tenuous to say the least. Uh, that you think, well, you know, things should go to hell and then the people will rise up and, you know, we'll have a, a new and better social system. So, um, uh, but the, at least the, the idea of promoting uh, uh, some ideas and some, and funding actually some, you know, whatever, some white papers and think tanks and whatever, and, and even, um, Instituting, you know, appointing judges potentially who are um, going to be more favorable to uh, people's actual real struggles in life, and not just respond to, you know, the politics of the moment and the donors and the and the you know the sheriffs' association or you know whatever the po playing politics with in, inside the law enforcement community, um, uh, and and. Uh, rather than uh, responding to the needs of their particular cases that they're supposed to review. So anyway, um, the, uh, and I still trust Democrats more to appoint, on the other hand, they are also appointing some, some absolute turkeys, like Biden is proposing one of the lawyers uh, that um, uh, worked on try imprisoning uh, um, Stephen Donziger, and who, you know, and this is a great miscarriage of justice. Uh, I, I, I won't um, get into the details of that, but anyway, uh, a corporate lawyer, basically, he's, uh, Biden is, is um, proposing that she become a judge, a federal judge, and, and um, Don Donziger is sounding the alarm about her. Um, and he, Donziger is a, hero, one of, is a hero and a, uh, you know, a public interest lawyer, unfortunately, who's been unjustly uh, uh, and, and illegally, I think, uh, prosecuted uh, for crimes uh, that he didn't commit. So um, anyway, um, but so the, the leg legitimation crisis of the, the Democrats is, is a complex and somewhat subtle thing. And I, I also want to call attention to, uh, and this is something I will talk about in, in, in a future episode, um, that the progressive wing of the Democratic Party, and then the real progressive wing, uh, I'm, I'm excluding parts of the Congressional Progressive Caucus from it because many of them are not progressives, but the actual progressives who are maybe 10 uh, in both houses of, uh, of Congress, um, and, uh, and they have a... Um, they, they have to navigate, and this is something that that um, now if their numbers grow, strategy will need to be developed uh, further about what, what's the road forward if they actually, the, the real progressives actually, if we get Jessica, Jessica Cisneros, for instance, elected, if uh, Charles Booker is elected, if Gary Chambers is elected, you know, um, uh, these are actual real progressives that are running uh, in 2022. Um, and uh, you know, the, and and the 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 squad, so to speak, or the plus Bernie, you know, grows. That you know, we need to then um, discuss what what is the role of these 
progressives and how are they going to act so they don't act as uh, fig leaves or, or legitimating instances for a Democratic Party that is headed uh, uh, or is not as headed but is already uh, acting their role as this good cop that is um, uh, 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 su supporting a corporate oligarchy, a, a, a billionaire class uh, run government essentially, or uh, that, the, that is a, a bought and sold corrupt um, uh, party, parties, both parties, so it's not just the Democrats. So, I mean, make no mistake, you know, if you vote for Republicans now, you are voting for fascism. So I'm not endorsing that at all. And, uh, but the, the time now is, the important time now is to reinforce the, um, those Democrats that are, that are gonna follow through on the social contract of the actual public service aspect or the, the outward facing social contract of the Democratic Party as at least suggested by in the trajectory of the Roosevelt uh, administration, um, which then faltered uh, 1944 and, you know, with uh, uh, the uh, edging out of Wallace as the vice president uh, for in favor of Truman. And so basically Wallace was a pretty much a, you know, a, a democratic socialist, social, social democrat, um, uh, who was uh, edged out of the um, ticket in in the um, uh, in the convention of uh, Democratic convention of 1944 uh, when uh, Roosevelt was already quite sick and um, so anyway so the uh, the turn away from uh, the trajectory of the New Deal toward social democracy and um, uh, you know that returning to that trajectory and then proceeding to realize it with the issues, not with the issues of the 1930s, not with the, the, uh, the grave oversights of the, um, uh, and, and, and the, the, the support for imperialism and militarism and, and racism and, you know, uh, uh, sexism to some degree, but, um, uh, that was installed, that was, uh, you know, part of the legal and policy infrastructure of that time. Um, uh, but anyway, to change the, uh, that or to, to continue with the civil rights movement and subsequent social movements, other social movements um, developed in the 1960s and 70s, but then are, which are being, again, by reactionaries being attempted to be uh, uh, pushed back and, and, uh, so anyway, so this, um, uh, the role of, of, um, progressives, so the progressives need to be very aware of not being used as a, um, a calling card or a, uh, an excuse by the, the leadership of the Democratic Party or a way to, um, fend off what might be a, um, an amicable dissolution, uh, uh, dissolution of the party at some point, or uh, you know, uh, or not so amicable, uh, uh, you know, hostile, a hostile one, but still, uh, that the um, the corporate wing of the Democratic Party is uh, very, very toxic. You know, <laughs> they, they're, they're, they're um, Machiavellian um, uh, uh, politicians who are not very good at politics and are not very good at the outward facing politics at all. They're terrible at it. They, and, and in some sense, you know, I mean, we have, um, uh, a fairly centrist, uh, Senator in, in, uh, John Ossoff realizing that, Hey, I have to get reelected in Georgia. And so he, uh, introduced this, um, uh, proposal. I'm, I hope it's serious. Um, of uh, Congress people not owning individual stocks anymore. And this uh, proposal, you know, is in direct contradiction, is going against Nancy Pelosi and it literally is seeing the writing on the wall and saying, I need to, and, and also he got elected in part because of the stock 
uh, insider trading of, of Purdue and um, Kelly Leffler, uh, the, the Republicans that both he and uh, Raphael Warnock uh, replaced in Georgia. Um, so, uh, you know, he is realizing that, hey, we need to legitimate our party. <laughs> we need to create a legitimate um, uh, uh, that, that, that we're for the people and we're not just, um, you know, Marie Antoinette's who say, you know, uh, let them eat cake, you know, which, uh, sometimes, uh, Nancy Pelosi does remind me a little bit of at least that, um, stereotype of Marie Antoinette. So, um, anyway, so that the, the corporate democratic party is, is not a, it's, it's a, it's a very, very, um, it's it's not a, it's it's no organization that I would uh, endorse other than saying it isn't the neo fascist um, racist Republican Party um, intent on destroying American democracy um, in, directly. So anyway, so I hope this lens on U.S. politics is interesting to you, and I hope you found these ideas uh, you know stimulating. And please share some. Uh, thoughts that uh, this um, video might have, uh, you know, triggered in you and, and we, we can discuss them there. And so I look forward to, and also please subscribe to this channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.